other people die, not you. But surely in your heart, you know that it might be you. It's just in the barracks, and the sergeant came through and said, we're looking for volunteers for airborne troop. And he says, the jump pay is 50 bucks a month. It was something brand new. They couldn't get people to go in. It had to be volunteered. They couldn't just draft you in there. So I thought that was the best thing in the world. I got off the bus at Fort Benny, Georgia, and I'm trudging on down the road with my barracks bag on my shoulder, and I heard this aircraft coming up on my right. And all at once, the guys started flying out the door. And that was the first time I had an inkling of what the hell I was getting myself into. <laughs> They seem like it's determined to get you so scared. That famous one, as if your shoot doesn't open, bring it back and we'll give you another one. The train was arduous. I wrote to my mother, I said, I don't know how the hell I'm going to survive this thing, but I'm not going to give up. Almost two years with the training, you became very close to your buddies. I mean, you just made up your mind you were going to do it come hell or high water, and that was part of the beginning of the, the brotherhood. Any combat soldier goes through that same anxiety because everybody knew that some of us were going to come back. We knew something big was going to happen. I think we were about as ready as you could get. It's just kind of like clockwork. You know what your mission is, you know what you're going to do. Everybody was gung-ho. I made it jump, I remember we were coloring up here painting our faces, and Gunny, he was a sergeant in the machine gun platoon. He was kind of a live wire, and he walked up to me, and he took me by the hand, and he said, Johnny, he said, kill as many of those bastards as you do before you go. You can feel the shape. Light leader said, you look a little nervous. This was just when we were getting ready to take off. And he says, what do you want to do, live forever? Aircraft. There was a real bright light coming. Then the aircraft made an immediate 45 and started over the Normandy Peninsula.
fire and the guys in the plane were praying and dropping over dead. Our plane was going down and there were bodies all over the floor. The three of us who were closest to the door got out. Nobody else. I remember standing in a barracks room back at the main station and hearing someone say, Smith got killed yesterday. I could picture his face and recall his voice. He was an actual person out of my life. Somewhere in the building, someone was playing a piano, and the sound of the piano is a part of the story as I remember it. On a Friday night after work, I got a telegram that said he had been slightly wounded. And my thought was, oh good, now he'll be coming home. But just a few days later, my mother called. They had received another telegram that said he had been killed, that he had died. I cried and I cried. Years later, I would dream about him coming home. And he was an old man, but he didn't remember me. He just couldn't place who I was. But I could see him, I could hear him talk. I told my mother, this can't be the good earth that I've always known. This must be hell.